Okay, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial on, on making a triptych image. So this is the idea of you know taking three images um, and putting them together to make a, a single image. Um, I'll also progress on to maybe using more than than three images as well. So I'm going to be using Photoshop to do to do this triptych. Now, as with anything in Photoshop, there's there's always more than one way to do to do the same job. Um, but I'm going to be using the frame tool because I find it really easy to use um, and it's a nice way of putting images together quickly so uh, these are the three images that I've got that I'm going to be using um, so these are all taken on the same evening and they're all the same subject uh, so I think it's really key to have you know uh, a series of images that have, have got some sort of correlation and, and, and tell a story so we've got you know a uh, caterpillar image here um, uh, of the the six spotted burnet moth, uh, and this is one of the moths here, and then there's two of the moths here uh, mating. So we've got you know a little bit of a, a story here, if you like, of this this circle of life, if you like, uh, with this subject. So I'm going to take these three images and make just a, it's a very simple triptych image. Now. Normally, I would want to create the, the, the triptych at the highest resolution I, I can. So I'd take you know, the longest side of the image, if you like, whether that be 4,000, 5,000 pixels, and I'd want to make the triptych that size. So if I did want to print it big, I could. For the purposes of this video, um, so I don't completely crash the, the computer, um, I'm working with smaller file sizes. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new document. Um, I'm going to make it 800 uh, pixels wide, 1,000 pixels in height. Um, resolution is going to be 3,000 pixels per inch just to match uh, the image resolution of the photographs that were taken. Um, I always work in sRGB, so I'm going to leave that as sRGB. And I've got a transparent background, which you'll see why in a minute. So this is the, the template that I'm working with. And you can see it's I've gone for a ratio that is almost sort of three times as wide as it is is tall because I'm going to have three images that are going to be next to each other. Now, I could just plonk the three images onto this onto this uh, layer uh, and and tinker about with them, do that. But I want to make it nice and easy. So now what I'm going to do is before I bring any images in, I'm going to go to a new guide layout. And I want three columns. Um, I don't want any rows because I've just got one row of images. Um, the gutter, so this is the space um, in between the columns or the rows. Um, and you just, this is personal preference, this is just how much of a gap you would like between the images. I'm going to knock this down to 0.25 of a centimeter. Um, and then down the bottom here we've got um, the margin. So this is the, again, this is the space at the top, side, bottom of the image. And I want this to be the same as my gutter. So I've got a nice same border all the way around the image. So that's going to be 0 0.25, 0 0.25 all the way around for me. And just OK that. So now you can see you've got these guides that um, are not on the image themselves, they're just there in Photoshop to help me um, lay out the images. So my next step is to bring the first image in, but before I do that, I'm going to the frame tool, which you can see here. I'll let the, the little graphic come up in Photoshop and show you what, it, what it's all about. Um, and by using, once I've got this selected, by using these guides that I've then put in place, I'm gonna draw a frame to those guides. Now it's not that easy to see on Photoshop. Um, maybe if I just colour the background for you in a moment, you might be able to see the frame better. There you go. You can see that's where I've I've placed the frame using the guides. Um, I don't want a white background at the moment because we'll come to that a bit later on. So now I've pulled, now I've done my first frame. I want to find my first image. Now, again, it's about thinking about where you're placing your images. Um, I'm actually, what we're we going to do, we'll go with a 
probably want the caterpillar in the middle actually so we go you know moth caterpillar moth just to just to break it up a little bit i'm going to bring this one in first so on control i'm doing command all a uh, to select all command c to copy and go back to this one and with my frame layer selected i just paste it in now this is where the frame tool is really useful because now if i do command t for free transform i can transform that image but within the boundaries of the frame you can see it doesn't go beyond the, the you know where i place that frame so now I can just make sure by using the free transform that the image is, is filling that frame and confirm that by clicking on the tick so that that's my first image in um, you can see basically the frame tool is actually acting like a mask if you like so I'm going to go back to the frame tool and do my second image like that so I've got another frame in the middle now I'm going to take the caterpillar image this time so command A to select all command C to copy go back to my my triptych image and command V to paste it in and you can see again it's pasted it within that frame now if I command T for free transform again you can see I'm only affecting that that area that's almost been it's been masked off by the frame um, I'm just going to make sure that this image is you know filling the frame got a nice diagonal going through the image like that and just tick that and that, that one's now in position so frame tool again and we do the final image and what's good about using the guides is difficult to demonstrate over the video but the, um, the frame tool will try and lock almost to the guide so it's really easy to find your position on the guides so that's the third one so we get grab our third image which was that one command a command c to copy and command v to paste it in and then command t free transform and you can see i can i can move it around in position make sure it's filling that area up Let's bring that in a little bit. There we go. And, and tick for position. So there we go. Very simple triptych, nearly nearly done. Uh, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go actually going to go back to the first one. This one here with the two the two moths on it. Because what I've got now is you know I've got a caterpillar that goes sort of left to right, and then I've got this moth on the right hand side that goes left to right again. And then this one here over on the left hand side is going right to left so i want i want a little bit of symmetry there so i'm going to go into free transform making sure i've got the the frame selected down here transform and flip horizontally and now you can see if i just confirm that you know we've got all three of these images leading the same way which i think it uh, makes for a stronger image now, um, I don't need the guides anymore. We've used the guides so we can um, clear guides and you can see we've got three images nicely evenly spaced, nice even border around the image. All we need to choose now is, is a background. Um, so I've got the bottom layer selected and if I take the, the paint tool, the uh, paint uh, bucket tool, and drop that in there we go nice clean white background obviously it can be any color you want uh, i like the white thing that works and job done just need to save the image So you see how easy it is to use the frame tool to create a triptych image. So what we're going to do now is do one a little bit more complex, um, like a collage, if you like, of five images, but using exactly the same principle we're using the frame tool. So I've got five images here that I took on the beach. Now, some of these images I think work nice on their own. Um, 
but going back to what we were saying around the triptych image, I think actually by pulling a, a series of images together, you can tell a little bit of a, a story. And obviously, with all these being taken in the same area on the same day, in the same sort of light, um, hopefully it tells a little bit of a, a story. So um, I don't want to just create, you know, put five images in a row and have a really wide image. So if you are working with more than three images, um, you do need to think about how you're going to arrange them. Now for these particular ones, I'm going to actually create um, a square image. So I'm going to go to make a new document. Again, I would use a, a high resolution normally. Um, so I get a high quality image, uh, you know, especially if I wanted to print it, but for the purpose of this video, and so it doesn't slow the computer down too much, I'm going to create a smaller size. So because I want square, I'm doing a thousand by a thousand pixels. So let's go ahead and create that. So when you're working with more images, you do need to think about how you're going to place them, because um, that's going to affect how you set out your guides. So I'm going to have, I've got five images, I'm going to have, um, two down one side and three down the other side so then go to new guide layout so for this particular one i'm going to have two columns and six rows which sounds a bit strange um but because obviously i haven't got six images but what six rows gives me is uh, a line through through the middle of the image um, because for some of these images i will overlap some of these guides that um which you'll see in a minute um, I've reduced the gutter for this particular image down to 0.1 um, and I've kept the margin the same. So the margin is the top, bottom and sides and the gutter is the space in between um, the columns and rows. So I want that nice and even all the way around. So take my frame tool and my first image is going to be up in this top left hand side and I'm having two images on this side so I'm going right down to this middle point for my first one. So get my first image, Command A to select all, Command C to copy, come back to this document and paste. Um, and this is where the frame tool is great. So you can see that looks pretty rubbish at the minute, but Command T for free transform. And I can take the image within that frame and place it. How I want. Obviously, I don't want to leave any of the frame area empty, so I want to make sure I'm filling the frame. But we'll go for, for something like that. So that's the first one done. So back to the frame tool, and we'll do this bottom left hand corner. like that so i bring in my second image which is that one so command a to select all command c to copy back to this one command v to paste and then control t to free transform and you know just position it how you how you want as long as you're filling filling that particular frame like that so that's two images on one side. So now I want to put three images on the other side, and that's where these these rows come in now because um, I've oh, you see here I've overlapped these rows, but now here I'm going to place one image here, another one through the middle, and another one down the bottom here. So I go back to my frame tool and one up in the top right hand corner here. Find my image, which I'm going to go for this one, copy this one in, paste, and command T to free transform. And then just about placing this one somewhere. I'm not being too too fussy for the sake of this video. Obviously, you can spend a bit more time to get it right. So fourth image next, and you can see actually once you this is where the yeah you know, the guides make it so much easier. Once you've worked out where where you want your guides, it, it makes it so quick and easy to get your your images in nice and evenly spaced. So this is going to be my next one. Paste this one in. Free transform. Oh. 
I've moved one of my guides. That was a pain. Oh well, I don't need that guide now, so. Because we've already placed the frame. So, what are we doing with this one? I'll do something like that. Um, and then frame tool again to do the final one in the bottom right hand corner here like that says so find my final image which is that one paste that in free transform and this, uh, this is going a little bit going back to the moth one um, I've got a little bit of a negative space here, so I'm going to actually I think I will flip this one horizontally so these this is leading sort of back into the image like that. So now if I clear these guides, you'll be able to see it a lot clearer. And if I go back to my base layer, which has got nothing on it, take my paint bucket, and there we go. And you know, if I press X to to flip the colours, you know you can play around with what colour board you would like um, without affecting any other of the layers. So simple as that. Five images.